Yeah. Okay, so where's the energy? Guys, can we hear it again for all the panelists out here? <laughs> I was just thinking that possibly how do we lighten up this particular session on social commerce. So I'm going to properly try to do an act, but if it goes wrong, then please excuse me. Kya aapko pata hai ki social commerce one trillion dollar economy hone wali hai? Okay, in 2025. And already it's 500 billion worth of it. And 373 of that comes from China. Hum kya kar rahe? The nation wants to know. Aaj mein charo se poochne wala hoon ki hum ye social commerce kya bala hai? Hum isko kaise kar sakte hai? Or hum, how, how can we excel from here? So the whole session is about kind of really decoding what social commerce is and what it entails for our marketers and the entire marketing community. Uh, I think she's already done the introduction for all of you, but I would like to start uh, with exploring uh, what, are, what is, who is your favorite, personally, personally favorite uh, influencer that you follow on social platforms and um, why specifically? So maybe we can start with you. Hi. Oh, that's the spot. There's so many of them, right? Uh, yeah, I will circle back to that one. Okay, sure. There's so many of them. Okay. Uh, I mean, he's not on social media, but I follow Warren Buffet since like 15 years or so because mm -hmm. finance is what I create <laughs> content on. So that right. And because of my voice, probably Farhan Akhtar, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for me, um, depending on the stage of life that I am and my current interests, it keeps changing. So as a new mother, all, all the top mommy and parenting bloggers um, and influencers on Instagram, I follow them. I, and since you asked me this question, it was a kind of a reflection for me because I don't even remember their handles because they are right. so there on my feed. I just, I just know their content and their faces. So, something to reflect on because they are all similar content, and I take a lot of value from these content. And um, they are there on my feed. I love to check. Them. Yeah, I mean the whole idea of discoverability on social is amazing, right? With especially the people whom we follow. Ifat, what about you? Sorry, I'm still trying to figure out how to switch on the mic. <laughs> Uh, so, I actually was never even on social media till uh, we kind of thought of Ella Mama and um, purely because of Alia, the only thing that comes on my feed is all the Bollywood paparazzi. <laughs> so, I ended up following the likes of Viral B Bayani and I don't know who all because we need to keep a tab on that. But in the personal space, uh, for me, uh, mental health is something that I believe and uh, I'm very passionate about. So, I mean, I normally follow a lot of uh, handles to do with mental health awareness. Right. We can come back to your Purva. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brené Brown. <laughs> now I do recollect. I really enjoy reading what she writes about, her podcast. So that's something that I uh, personally enjoy very much. Yeah. Right. Cool. As I said, uh, I mean, coming back to the subject on social commerce, as I said that this whole opportunity is so unprecedented, right? And uh, somewhere most of the markets are just scratching the surface. Uh, we look at, obviously we spoke about China and the kind of innovation that's coming through out there. We see uh, live streams where like, you know, millions and millions of dollars of transactions are happening. Then we see a lot of innovation that comes through from uh, SEA market specifically, more into kind of really identifying certain communities and selling effectively out there, right? So more of like KOCs who are actually become sellers as such. And then we have also seen from the data that comes through from UK and US is that a lot of influencers have actually now gone ahead and become sellers online for brands, right? Uh, I mean, there are marketplaces where influencers can actually catch up on a certain uh, brief and uh, and create like you know content which is end-to-end -end commerce led, and I think that's on the rise. But specifically on India, what we've seen is that we as a marketing community has been really grappling to really find out how we can scale and win on social commerce. So let's try to decode that. But firstly, more importantly, social commerce could mean a lot of things for a lot of people, right? I mean, their uh, definition itself could be varied. 
So maybe uh, it'll be good to understand and decode what is social commerce. So maybe I can start with you, uh, Anushri. What do you think social commerce is? So uh, social commerce for me is uh, when there is a path to discovery and shoppability within the platform itself. I would categorize that as social commerce and it, what it no, is not, I would like to emphasize um, very specifically on that because many marketers um, make the assumption or presumption that it's um, performance ad or uh, you know, co content that is linked to uh, your direct ad buys. So that is not social commerce, that is specifically performance driven. So we really need to be sure what social commerce is and what it is not to therefore identify whether it is really relevant for your category and therefore deep dive into it and also understand whether social commerce really makes sense for your category or not. Right, right. If at how would you describe social commerce if someone, some layman comes in and asks you what is social commerce, how would you describe See, that? To me, uh, social commerce is a shop opportunity, okay? So it's where people are looking to shop and uh, along with the daily content that they consume, Brands are giving them an opportunity to come and shop. So for me, that is pure, purely social commerce. Uh, and uh, coming from a brand which is hugely content and storytelling driven, we use uh, a lot of our content and storytelling to drive all our stories uh, on our IG handles. And we've actually realized and noticed that uh, a lot of traffic that comes to us, uh, we have the, the highest conversions and AOVs in terms of even session lengths uh, coming in from our IG handles. Wow, okay. So for me, it's basically, good content that you give them to consume and offer shopping as an opportunity as well. So, so if I can say it's shopping experience, content-led shopping experience yeah. for you. Okay. Kunwar, uh, you, you are something unique on this panel, right? I mean, you are a finance uh, influencer and I can see in the previous panel as well, we had finance influencers. So there's something that's going on here. Uh, what do you think in your world is social commerce? Uh, so <coughs> So basically, I feel when a creator or an influencer shares his or her personal experience of using a product or a service, that's what social commerce is for me. And I'm particularly very against uh, people who are selling anything on the internet or creators sell selling anything on the internet. So whenever we collaborate with a brand or we work with a brand, we mostly it's fintech or edtech brand, so we have uh, apps, so we use the products and if we like it, if we use it on a daily or weekly, monthly basis, whatever the product is, and then share the experience because we want to connect with the audience and tell our real stories, that's where the conversions are also really high. So, so as a creator, if you're sharing your true experience with the audience, they connect with you. So that is uh, kind of social commerce for me. Perfect. Uh, up for your views, please. Uh, I think pretty much what everybody touched upon, right? Where the entire journey of discovering a product or a brand or a service uh, to uh, to being convinced about it and then finally being a to be able to shop within that same ecosystem or that same platform is social commerce, right? Uh, the, the, the easiest example of it that comes to my mind is the shop now feature uh, that Meta, uh, you know, platform sort of enable. Uh, that, that's like the easiest example. There are obviously more uh, evolved examples of what companies and brands have been doing uh, and doing very well outside of India. Um, I'm still to see some really standout examples and I'm hoping one of my brands also sort of uh, uh, is able to crack it. Uh, do it well here in India. Okay, so you, you interestingly mentioned that uh, a post on social media having a shop now tag on to it, uh, would that be classified as a social commerce for you? In my mind, yes. Okay. Um, in the purest definition, because is the checkout happening on the platform? Not necessarily. Right. But eventually, I'm hoping that the products or the platforms will get there, where the entire shopping journey s happens on that platform. So, so let me ask that because that's an interesting space, right? And when we talk about like platforms like Meta, I mean, they they are kind of really pushing the whole brand collapse piece so hard, right? And there are two aspects out there. One is you actually go ahead and create content as a brand and then you add shoppability as one of the functions on it and that leads to a social commerce angle or you you also have an option to kind of really look at certain ads okay and add shoppability to it so which of that is social commerce and which of that is not so where the brands are the creators yeah, otherwise it's just an ad absolutely 
No, I think that's that's really important because just fact for the fact that you're selling online on a social platform that doesn't classify as social commerce. So what I'm hearing from the panelist is that there is discoverability, there is shoppability, there is creator, and uh, there is this whole mix of an end-to-end -end integration uh, where the 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 piece where we are talking about uh, creators, we're talking about uh, the whole commerce angle, and also, more importantly, the social channels, right? So these could be in forms of like live commerce, it could be in forms of uh, in-app shopping experiences, could be community commerce, and, and that's exactly what the whole involvement of social commerce as a space is. What I would also love to kind of really understand from you guys is, have you guys been part of any social commerce campaigns, or you've been privy to that, uh, which which has been really a standout and has created like a massive shift in in the outcomes that you're going after. So probably Ifat, you want to give a view on that. Yeah. So actually, for us, it's, it comes very naturally, uh, and we keep using social commerce and pushing it on our uh, IG handles and uh, other platforms because uh, the brand is heavily content driven, right? So when you're constantly creating content, it's very easy to kind of put it out there. So for, just for an example, I mean, for Children's Day, we actually had a seven-day uh, carnival for kids online. And we had a live, uh, a puppet show on, on IG Live. And uh, it was it was amazing to see the kind of engagement that we, we got. The engagement levels were, uh, were really, really good. Uh, way, way, way more than what we expected. Uh, we actually created our own finger puppets that were designed by, by us. And uh, th you know, the kind of calls that our CX team actually got post that asking for, for puppets and even even the clothes that were shown as part of the puppet show. So we didn't expect people to actually call in and ask for those things. Right. But we actually saw that happen. Uh, we've seen a similar kind of response even when we've had uh, shows on uh, on Minta Studio, uh, which is a fantastic platform, which I'm not Absolutely. sure how many brands are actually exploring. But we've been working very actively with them, and we've done a few M lives with them as well. Uh, but uh, you know. What I strongly feel is that the content that you use on these lives uh, needs to be relevant. Okay, mm -hmm. so if it's going to be purely an influencer just showing your products all the time and saying, you need to buy this, you need to buy this, that's not the kind of content that we're looking for. It right. needs to have a story driving it. So relevancy is more important Absolutely. as well. Okay. Absolutely. We've also, uh, so just, just for background, bestseller uh, retails fashion brands like Jack and Jones, Vero Moda, Selected and Only. Um, and we do try to stay ahead of the curve. So we, we have been dabbling with social commerce and live commerce uh, over the last uh, and, and over the last 12 months or so, right? So we, we've been running different pilots to see how it works um, and arrive at our own metrics in terms of, you know, what is considered as good performance, what are the best practices, and how do we iterate from there, right? Um, so we have also tried uh, social commerce. It's been, uh, it's been, a, you know, it's been encouraging for the women's wear brand, which mm -hmm. is Vero Moda and only. Uh, we're hoping to try that for Jack and Jones and for Selected as well. Yeah. Tell us a little more about that campaign that you did for only and Vero Moda, right? So what, what kind of came out of it? What were the outcomes? Uh, was it a campaign? So I, in case, in case of okay. Ifat, I see that the whole experience was fulfilling. But in your case, what was the experience that you had? I think it was. You know, because it's, it was something that had just about started. Right. Um, and we did want to sort of try it out and see, you know, what are the learnings in there. I think the very elementary learning that came for us was the fact that, you know, you need to also aid the consumers or the viewers or people who are engaging with the, uh, with the commerce piece. It is a simple thing as a conversion tool, right? Like give them a flash discount, which can only be accessed and can then trigger the purchase. Um, the other thing was also for us, to have more realistic expectations um, from the outcomes that we could expect out of the activity, right? Uh, typically for, uh, you know, typically for any any uh, sale campaigns or any performance campaigns or any brand campaigns that we do also, right? You want to increase your frequency and people will typically transact with you if they, they're, they're seeing you at a frequency. Um, so having that expectation that, you know, you see one live commerce session or a social session and then you are converting was also something that we had to collaborate internally. Right, right. Anush, uh, you have been a part of, uh, I mean, you've been an influencer yourself, right? And a brand creator and you've had, I think more than 50 collabs with different brands across categories. You've seen the space a lot. You have come across one stand up execution on social commerce, which kind of says this is gold standard. Yes. Um, 
So if I then Apurva spoke about um, the importance of uh, content, uh, right? And I would want to double click on that because in the previous panel, we heard about the importance of the three Cs. I would like to bring in another concept of three Rs, which is reach, relevance, and resonance. So often uh, marketers um, fall for this concept that the more number of followers, the more reach, which is actually untrue in today's scenario. So. Um, I would like to share this example, and I know many of us might be familiar about this influencer, Ari, um, with millions of followers, launched her own collection and could not even manage to get 36 um, buy-ins for her product. So wow. this is an example of how when you just, like if I spoke about that, this is my product and come and buy it, even with someone with crazy number of followers, may not be able to sell. So. Um, again, double clicking on uh, relevance and uh, resonance. Is your content really resonating with your audience? Um, as an influencer and also as a brand, so as a brand that you're um, teaming up with influencers or as a brand that you are reaching out to your core audiences, uh, take care that you are really harnessing on your reach, your relevance and your resonance. And, not just going by the numbers alone, because um, today more than ever, um, you know, we see micro influencers with niche following and with really no numbers giving a much better ROI right. than really big influencers and sometimes even celebrities. Oh, interesting. That's the new RRR in social commerce. Uh, Kunwar, I mean, we have been talking about like you know some of the examples and mostly it's in the space of fashion wear and like you know retail normally what you see and 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 i've seen examples in uh, beauty personal care etc and all that do you think this whole play of social commerce is category specific or it kind of really goes ahead to categories beyond the uh, like you know beauty personal care fashion etc no, for <clears throat> for sure it uh, it goes beyond so i'll uh, give an example, I'm not sure if we can classify it as social commerce commerce, but okay. one of the most successful uh, brand collabs that we did was with a, a fintech brand where I personally used their product for a month and then documented it and then made like a reel and a YouTube video on that. Mm -hmm. So that drove the maximum conversions as compared to the other collabs because the people could see how the app was being used, how the entire experience was. Because in most of uh, uh, the, let's say, fintech or edtech products, they usually have a website or an app. It's not a physical right. uh, product that you can immediately sell. So it's either downloading an app or doing certain activities, that how, how you drive uh, success there, right? So there I feel people sharing their personal experience and documenting that in real time works really well. Uh, because we see most of the people just doing like a quick integration uh, mm -hmm. in a video, right? That really, people miss that out. Uh, and right, right. So if we can document the journey showing how you are using the product, that works fantastically with, with people. And they know that I'm using it and I'm not just promoting it for the sake of it or for the monies. Yes. Right, interesting. Any, any views from the other panelists on categories specific on social commerce? I do definitely think that certain categories and segments uh, lend and have higher chances mm -hmm. of uh, this new way of reaching out to consumers, working for them, right? Beauty, say, uh, you know, Nika does it. Mm -hmm. They have a separate live stream pretty much all through the year. And they've got, um, you know, beauty influencers or women who are trying out different looks and creating looks, right? Where you need to educate the customer as to how do you build a certain look. Likewise, Mintra is doing um, M Live, right? Which is, a, again, a constant ongoing activity where people sort of put <coughs> styles and looks together. And it's, it's more, again, educational. Uh, so beauty, definitely. Fashion retail, definitely. Um, wherever there is need to educate consumers or have, uh, you know, have, have, have demonstration of the product, uh, those categories would definitely lend themselves better. Isn't that true for all categories? You need to educate for every category, right? I, I'm, like you say beauty, but then if I talk about, let's say a, 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 a product like a small case, people need to be aware how the product needs to be used. And that's also a long-term demonstration. 
So I personally, the tracking mechanisms will be different and right. how the content will be created will be different. But a lot of uh, uh, products have started doing long-term collaborations mm -hmm. where they are showing the en entire journey of using the product as well. So, I mean, I feel all products in the beginning need some sort of education on how it's supposed to be uh, used. Actually, products which are uh, new in the category or you're trying to introduce an absolutely new category in itself, that's where you need a lot of education. So when you speak about fintech as well, because we, we are warming up the audience to use this, right? We are not used to even thinking about our finances, let alone um, uh, trying out an app. So hence, it really works for this new category of fintech. But if you look at FMCG, like I don't need to be educated how to use my toothbrush and toothpaste. So the brand can be still big. And if they're really coming out with a new category or a new variant, not Correct. category, yeah. I don't need influencers to talk about it. Or Anything that's new it. or needs some yes. education, that's, right. yeah, probably. No, absolutely. And, and what role does uh, communities have to play in social commerce specifically? Uh, if at, uh, I know that you run a uh, uh, NGO as well, uh, okay, in those areas. Uh, and Anushri, you have been part of like building communities out here. So we'd love to know both of your thoughts as to what's the role of communities in social yeah, commerce? So I, I strongly feel that uh, building communities uh, really helps. Uh, in fact, when we launched Edamama, the whole thought was to create a, you know, a, a mommy community mm -hmm. that, that resonates the same philosophy of the brand and talks and, and truly belie believes in sustainability. So uh, we actually started reaching out uh, to moms, regular moms, uh, who, you know, who were following uh, or rather were interested in, in uh, conservation, sustainability, and you know, resonated the same philosophy. And we realized that over a period of time, we were able to connect quite a few moms. And in less than a year, I think we, we, we built a small community of almost 80, uh, 80 moms across the country, right. uh, even in, in tier two and tier three cities. Uh, what is important is how you reach out to these people and how, how do you actually filter? So, you know, building a community is very easy, but like she said, I mean, Anushri mentioned, Relevance is it is it relevant to your brand? Is it re is it I you know does it make sense to have these people associate with you? Is right. it adding any value to have them on board? That is the most important thing. Absolutely. Uh, to add on to what Ifat spoke about, uh, building communities is again very important, but again is very category specific. So from a personal example, I lead a community of new mothers. We have around 200 mothers across uh, India. And this aspect of social commerce takes a different role here because um, the members are micro-influencers because I've established a rapport, I've established uh, credentials within the group, not for what I do in life, but just by being, by sharing this same bond of being mother. So uh, when somebody would buy something and they would share that, okay, you know, I bought this for my baby and everybody would ask, okay, where did you buy it? And then one link and then we joke about it that, okay, you know, this product is going to go out of stock on Amazon because everyone is going to buy it. So. Um, it, it, it's the same concept of influencers, but at a much micro level, but it's more authentic. Far, far higher chances of conversion, yes. right? Very right. high chances. Right. Yeah. Because you know, you personally know who is buying that. And rather than believing or seeing some content that, okay, this may or may not work, mm -hmm. I trust this person in my close secret group. And communities are the way to go. And um, um, like uh, the panelists here have uh, concurred, it, it really depends on the category. So. Um, if it really fits your category, then that's something that we shouldn't, or the marketers shouldn't ignore, but also harnessing it, just creating a WhatsApp group for the sake of it wouldn't work. There right. has to be constant engagement and no hard product sell, uh, selling also. I know brands have uh, made their communities and they create this safe space just to share, and that is what uh, members would really value. Absolutely. No, I mean, uh we all know communities are important and how social is kind of really getting into it and like, you know, there's so many uh, plugs that have been pulled across from there and we see that the conversions that are happening from that angle is, is amazing. Uh, bringing it back to the influencers or the creators who are actually creating content and driving social commerce, do you think there is a differentiation between someone who is an influencer Okay, and is like purely posting and creating content. And there's someone who's actually going ahead and selling content online. 
right? So for example, in case when I popped into your D2C site, I saw uh, you guys have launched the new range of uh, maternity wear, right? And Ali is featuring on it. But tomorrow, if you have to do a live commerce event, would you take a big influencer out there or you'll actually put in uh, someone uh, who is actually more sales oriented and like, you know, driving re real conversions at that very moment itself? I'm like I mentioned earlier, I think, I mean, the, the whole purpose of having live commerce, uh, at this stage, it's really nascent in India. And uh, I mean, at least from, from our standpoint, whenever we do have, uh, you know, live commerce sessions, it's more about creating, uh, con you know, awareness for the brand. So we normally pick up certain topics and we talk about those topics in our live sessions. So it's not purely conversion driven, it's more about creating an awareness. So I'll just give you a very small example. Last season, we launched something called a green denim which is uh, very new in the kids' wear category. So the, the denim does not use, uh, or rather there's zero wastage of water. So, you know, we pick up things like these and then we, 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 we kind of create a story around it, build content around it, and that's what we use in our live conversations. Right. Apurva, if you have to select an influencer to do live commerce for, again, like, you know, one of the things that you mentioned, but you want to do another session or another live commerce event, what attributes would you go after So, pretty much all brands that we retail are of a certain scale and have a fair bit of distribution in the country. So, reach does become an important parameter uh, for us to do that exercise also, right? Um, having said that, if, uh, if I have to break down the activity and focus on a certain, uh, certain region or certain part of the country, then I would probably be looking at regional influencers. Um, so, reach at a pan-India level, reach if it's a region-specific campaign. Um, uh, their usual health metrics, whether it's engagement and what's the audience, uh, you know, what's the follower split, etc. Uh, so those would be the basic health uh, checkup that we would probably be doing. Uh, what would also be really important, and what my team and I have a whole lot of Gen Zs and Millennials in my team, they do a vibe check. Mm -hmm. um, nice, interesting. Yeah, so that, that influencer has to match the brand vibe. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, for the longest time, didn't understand. It was a very ephemeral thing, vibe check. But yeah, then eventually I got a hang of it. So it, it, it essentially means whether that influencer, through the content that they have been uh, creating, uh, match with the brand DNA and the ethos and whatever it is that the brand is trying to do, right? So yeah, so we do a vibe check as well. Okay, great. That's, that's interesting. I like the word vibe check. Uh, we are over time by two minutes already, so I'd like to close the panel, uh, but before I close, uh, I, I, I strongly believe that we as an Indian marketing community has a lot to kind of uncover on uh, social commerce. So if you have to again leave the room with one tip where the marketing community can start their social commerce journey, what would that be? Maybe we can start with Ifat. Yeah. For me, I, I keep uh, pushing the fact that the content should be relevant. So if you don't have relevant content, you're never going to be able to drive home anything with the consumers. Perfect. Anushree. So I spoke about the three R's and um, uh, I concur with uh, Ifat, content, communities, and uh, never forget your reach, relevance, and resonance, all the three put together and not in isolation. Perfect. I think uh, <clears throat> differentiation, differentiation between uh, uh, influencer marketing and uh, uh, performance marketing needs to be more clear when the brands discuss this or make budgets or reach out to creators because at a, at a lot, in a lot of talks that we have, it's very blurry and it just wastes a lot of time on both sides. So that needs to be clear, ki where, where are you headed, which direction and that should be clear, yes. My suggestion is try. Uh, you never know when it's an idea whose time has come. And when the time has come, you should be prepared. You should have your learnings and then you're ready to sort of fire. Cool, thanks, thanks, that's great. I mean, I'll just like to close it with this. Uh, I mean, we all know about retail therapy, right? And when you speak to some of the behavioral experts, uh, they say that at any point of time when you do some shopping, okay, there is some kind of a dopamine released and they call it retail dopamine. And uh, marry that with the power of social, right? I mean, today 
we all live our lives around the social platforms and validation is an important element in, in everybody's life actually and that you're getting from social. So the power of retail and the power of social combined together is, is superb, it's amazing. And I, I strongly feel that in India we haven't seen too many uh, social commerce campaigns or like you know things that have scaled. But it's, it's a space that we all are kind of really watching closely, as, as uh, Apurva said, we should try. And I, I strongly feel that the next level of innovation uh, in this space is going to come from India. So with that, I close the panel. Thank you, guys.